Good evening. At this time, I would like to call the March 7, 2023 school, Stanley County School Board of Education meeting to order. Welcome to those of you that are here in attendance and to those that may be joining us via live streaming. We appreciate you being here and for your support of Stanley County Schools. At this time, I would like to call on Ms. Robin Whitaker for our invocation and pledge of allegiance to the flag. If you all bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we pause before you at the start of our school board meeting to lift up our hearts to you in prayer and thanksgiving. Lord, we thank you for the many mercies that you show us. We seek your favor as we prepare to make plans for the future of our school system. Lord, we pray that you'll give each board member here tonight the wisdom to discuss the many important issues that are faced in our system. Lord, as we make our decisions, we ask that we'll make wise decisions. We pray that you will guard and guide our schools. And Lord, we confess that today we're probably facing increasing pressures from outside, Lord. And we conform to the ways that um, maybe go against us and for what we stand for. Lord, we just ask you to give us the wisdom to move forward in a way that pleases you. We lift each staff member and each student, Lord, that's sitting in our classrooms. Lord, we lift them up to you and every member of this board, Lord. We ask that you will continually bless us in every way that is possible. Lord, we ask for your wisdom and your guidance, your courage and your strength in all our issues and areas that touch our life. We, are, we ask that you keep us humble, Lord, and you give us the integrity to stand up for what we believe in. So Lord, I place this school board meeting in your hands. Lord, I trust that you will lead and guide us tonight as we seek your continued protection. Lord, you watch over our schools, Lord. We ask for that protection each and every day. We pray this in your name. Amen. On your agenda, we have several outstanding recognitions at this time. So I'm going to turn this over to you, Dr. Dennis. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. We do have several recognitions tonight. The one I want to start off with are the Reed Bowl, Reed Bowl Elementary State Champion winners. And these are from Indy Elementary. And I believe I have a couple faculty members who are going to come up and help me present. So I know I read what I had in my email, so why don't you tell us a little bit about the Reed Bowl? The Reed Bowl is a program that is put on by past NFL player Malcolm Mitchell. Um, he is very passionate about reading. He has also published a couple of books that we include in our library. So his program is for students to get passionate about reading again. So he offers this quarterly um, competition where students can dock minutes and play it like a Super Bowl. So at the end of the four weeks, we tally up how many minutes that we have read and submit it on their online platform and they judge us against. It's really a global pro program and there's many different levels of competition. So we ended up winning the North Carolina State Elementary com com Conference. And do you remember the number? It was a very big number. Oh my goodness. I don't remember exactly. It was of over 8,000 per 8, student. 8,000, that's right. Yes. That they read in the, yes. those four quarters. So that's very impressive. And uh, again, there's only one winner from each state and the winner for the state of North Carolina is in the elementary school. Congratulations. <laughs> So next I would like to invite Lynn Plummer to the podium and we are going to introduce the 2023 District Spelling Bee winner. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board. On February 2nd, we had 15 elementary and middle school spelling bee champions from across the district join us right here on the stage for our District Spelling Bee. 
One person who stung out, stood out among the group was last year's runner-up back again to compete right here on the stage. After eight rounds of competition and spelling words like vertical, menacing, tiara, Chicago, reenactment, she won with the correct spelling of intubated. Please join me in congratulating St Stanley County Schools 2022-2023 spelling bee, C-H-A-M-P-I-O-N, fourth grade student from Stanfield Elementary School, Stella Brown. She's fine. I don't think Stella can make it tonight, but we'll make sure we get her dictionary to her. She's that good, she doesn't need a dictionary. <laughs> so next I would like to invite to the podium Mandy Melton and we're going to uh, introduce CTE National Technical Honor Society. Good evening, board members. We have representation from all four traditional high schools for the CTE National Technical Honor Society. So I'm gonna let those representatives tell you a little bit about their club and what they have been doing at their respective campuses. And we have a little sh slideshow for you as you listen. I'm Jackson Herlocker. I'm a senior at North Stanley. I'm Abigail Wall. I'm a senior at North Stanley High School. I'm Payne Roach. I'm also a senior at North Stanley High School. I'm going to go over a few things that we do at the National Technical Honor Society. Um, I, my main focus is agriculture. Um, my CTE teachers and stuff that have helped me uh, to where I'm going to plan to go to NC State in the fall to the Agricultural Institute. In the, Ag uh, in the National Technical Honor Society, we um, one of the highest accomplishments is that we can be bestowed upon a career and technical education student. The purposes of the National Technical Honor Society are to reward excellence in workforce education, to develop self-esteem, pride, and encourage students to reach for higher levels of achievement, to promote business and industry's critical workplace values, honesty, responsibility, initiative, teamwork, productivity, leadership, and citizenship to help schools build and maintain effective partnerships with local businesses and industry, and to champion a stronger, more positive image for workforce education in America. The National Technical Honor Society slogan is excellence in America's workforce begins with excellence in workforce education. I feel the students of Stanley County are blessed with the absolute best CTE teachers and that help us prepare for our education after high school. I'm going to go over a few things that I do. In National Technical Honor Society, all four years of my high school career, I've been in ag my whole career. I've met so many good people through ag. I met, got into FFA, which I've came here and spoken about that before. I met many good people through that. I went to Indianapolis. That was fun. I've just had a lot of good opportunities. I've, we farm. I've never thought, you know, I always thought I'm just the most brilliant person because I farm and I can learn all I can there. But hey, I got to learn even more through the school. And, I plan to continue that at NC State, and I'm gonna let the rest of them talk about some more. Uh, hi, I'm Abigail Wall. I am the president of our North Stanley chapter, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about a reading program I've developed with the help of the Technical Honor Society. Before I start, I really wanna agree with Jackson by saying that we have some of the best CTE teachers here, and one of my favorites, Miss Tina Carter, is actually who helped me start my reading program. So, to Begin. I'm part of the Bezos Scholar Program, and that's a program that picks 12 high school seniors every year and takes them to Aspen, Colorado, and then engages them in a year-long leadership development program. It's here that I found the inspiration and confidence to start my program known as Lead, Read, and Achieve, which pairs high school mentors with elementary school students to engage them in reading activities and build confidence in their literacy. So many of our members are members of the National Technical Honor Society, and I found that these students have better leadership skills, better mentorship skills, because of the things that they've trained in. And I mean, I trained in architecture, but being around all of these students who are so career-driven, it's really helped me create 
an environment for these elementary school students to see things that they can aspire to. Um, the program Lead, Read, and Achieve, we go to Richfield every Monday and Tuesday, and you'll see like Payne Roach, he's one of the students who helps me with this, and we really have inspired a lot of students. Above that, it's also helped a lot of our high school students achieve further. Um, personally, I'm attending Brown University in the fall with a full ride scholarship of over $75,000 per year. So, thank you. Can't even reach the microphone. Okay. You can pull it down. There you go. Um, my name is Jaitlyn Steele, and I'm a member of the National Technical Honor Society at Almar High School, and I'm the secretary. And um, one of the programs we have at Almar, um, us at Almar, we are student ambassadors of the Be Pro Be Proud program, and it was a truck that came to our school. And it had different stimulators and virtual reality. Um, you could experience different types of trades on it and stuff like that. So, yeah. Good evening. My name is Ava Tolbert, and I, pro I represent the South Sydney High School National Technical Honor Society, where I'm the current president. Um, our chapter actually has 33 members, and we had our spring induction on February 27th, so it was pretty recent, and we got to induct and um, speak with a lot of new faces and welcome them to the group. One of the benefits that I'm going to talk about of National Technical Honor Society is that they do offer scholarships for high school students, which I think is a really good chance for us to branch out and get money for the schools that we want to go to. Um, awards are close to $300,000 each year and I'm sure that they give out way more than that um, people just don't apply for them and everybody should. Over the years National Technical Honor Society has awarded almost three million dollars in scholarships to members. There are also some scholarships open to all students where um, they've been the requirement to be a member or either have participated in Skills USA or any other competition associated with National Technical Honor Society. I personally have applied for two scholarships. I'm pretty sure where I'm hoping to get into Cabarrus College of Health Sciences, and that should help me further my education and have a little bit of leeway to where I can go back and get my bachelor's after I get an associate's degree. And I really appreciate having a student-led organization like this to meet new faces, just like FFA or actually National Honor Society, where we can do great things within our school and make it better. Thank you. Hello, I'm Zach Kelly from West Stanley High School. I'm vice president of the club. Um, our blood drive for 2022 to 2023 set the school record for amount of sign-ups and turn-ups. So um, that, that was great. And we did an eighth grade tour, which um, helped get um, younger audiences into CTE and National Technical Honor Society. Um, that's it. <laughs> Ms. Melton, do you want to say anything else about this? I said it all. <laughs> we are so impressed, um, definitely. Um, I'm amazed. Wow, Brown University? And I know that I heard you over there, Dr. Dennis, with NC State. <laughs> I did, I, I heard that. So, Im so impressed, and you know what I'm so impressed most to? Every single one of them, they, they say we have the best CTE teachers, and they have inspired them. And now they, these students, are inspiring others. It's what it's all about, and uh, we appreciate you so much. We would love to have all of you, if you will come to the front, and our indie um, 
people as well, teachers. If y'all will please all come to the front. Our board would like to congratulate you, please. Thank all of you again. Uh, Ms. Melton, thank you for what you do. And our teachers, our students, their parents. Um, we, we really are inspired by everyone. Thank you. <clears throat> At this time, I would like to ask for a motion to enter into closed session for personnel matters. North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11A6. Student Matters, North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11A1. Attorney Client Matters, North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11A3. May I have a motion, please? Make a motion when going to close session. A motion by Ms. Coplin, a second. Second by Ms. Watson. All in favor say aye. Any opposed, no. Okay, the board is now in closed session. For those of you that are here, certainly at this time, if you would like to leave, we'll be in closed session for a while. But once again, thank you so, so much. Thank you. And for your support of Stanley County Schools. We have more recognitions, Dr. Dennis. So once again, I'm going to turn this over to you.
I would like to invite Miss Beverly Pennington to the podium to introduce our indoor track state champion. Miss Pennington. Thank you, Dr. Dennis. If I could ask a Kayla Garrett, her mother, uh, Lasagna Collins, and principal, Dr. Robert Wingett, to come stand up here beside me so I can embarrass Ka Kayla a little bit. <laughs> Madam Chair and board members, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our latest state champion, Akela Garrett. Before sharing her most recent accomplishments, I think it's important that you know a few of her previous achievements. This past summer, Akela was the youngest member of Team USA to participate in the World Under 20 Championships in Columbia, South America. She took first place in the 400 meter hurdles and first place in the four by 400 meter relay. She has also previously won the Nike Indoor Nationals 60 meter hurdle, the Outdoor Nationals 400 meter hurdle title, and the AAU Indoor National 60 and 400 meter hurdles. She has won eight state championships in 4A indoor and outdoor track events while a student at Harding High. Akela came to Albemarle High School this year, her senior year, at the beginning of the school year after her mother accepted the position of Dean of Students at Albemarle High. Akela's mother, Lasagna Collins, uh, quickly um, and she's also a Kayla's coach, by the way, uh, quickly recognized a strong interest in indoor track at Albemarle High School. So she got together a team and in their inaugural season took two runners to the state championship and in, um, indoor track. And Kayla came home a winner again. This time, her state titles include, uh, she was first place in the 55 meter hurdles setting a new state record, the 500 meter run, another state record, and the 300 meter run. She also took home the most outstanding performer of the meet award. Akela has committed to the University of Texas this fall and will continue to aspire to one day be on the US Olympic team. We are very proud of Akela and can't wait to see her continued success. I understand she's going to New York this weekend to compete. So please join me in a round of applause for Akela and her mother and coach, Lasagna Collins. <laughs> That's outstanding. We're very proud. Um, we did have an ESS substitute in a month, but with logistics, uh, we're going to uh, move that to the next meeting. Uh, the final thing, uh, people, I guess I should say, we want to recognize are our winners of the Stanley Star Awards. I'd like to invite to the podium Miss Angela Wood. Good evening. Each month, Stanley County Schools will recognize two classified employees and two certified employees through the Stanley Star Award Program. This month, these employees were nominated by the principals and staff at Locust Elementary School and North Stanley Middle School. Employees were surprised at their respective schools by a visit from Dr. Dennis and were provided with a $25 gift card sponsored by the Nehemiah Project. We thank the Nehemiah Project for their generous donation of $1,500 to cover all awards for the year. As I call your name, please step forward to accept your certificate. From Locust Elementary, the certified staff member is Addie Tucker. Ms. Tucker. Ms. Tucker is a phenomenal kindergarten teacher who has 26 years of experience in education. 
She is loved by her students, parents, and co-workers. Her students have tremendous academic growth in reading and math. She goes above and beyond to create engaging lessons for students. Laughter and love permeate her classroom. She is truly one of the best. The classified staff member is Ms. Louise Green. Ms. Green has worked for Stanley County Schools for over 35 years. She has been a staple at Locust Elementary for over 10 years. She cares about students, regularly cooks wonderful meals for people at Locust for their birthdays and other celebratory occasions. She runs the office when administration is out in the school or at the district office. She is loved by students, staff, and parents at Locust. From North Stanley Middle School, the certified staff member is Mr. Toby Carnes. Mr. Car Mr. Carnes is not new to the teaching profession, but is new to North Stanley Middle School this year. His positivity, drive, and character make him an outstanding teacher and staff member. He builds relationships with students, fosters collaboration, and is always putting what is best for students first. And the classified staff member from North Stanley Middle School is Jan Crisco. Ms. Crisco was not able to join us this evening. However, she is a cornerstone in the child nutrition program and has served as cafeteria manager at North Stanley Middle School for the past four years. She's an upbeat, diligent worker and admired by her coworkers. Students love her positivity and kindness. Congratulations to all of these employees and thank you for your dedication to Stanley County Schools. If you will remain standing up here, we would like to get um, Kayla and her family and Dr. Wingett, Mr. Devron Fur, could we get you to come up here? And if there's anyone here from North Stanley Middle or anyone else from Locust or Albemarle, please feel free to come up here. Um, our board, we are so, so proud of all of you. Akela, what a great, I mean, accomplishment. I know you're going to make that Olympics one day. We know you will. And I was in Miss Addie Tucker's class this past week, and I mean, I could just live in there if, if you would let me live in there, Mr. Fur. Okay. But um, we're so proud of you. Our board wants to come around and congratulate you. And board members, let's take about a five minute break after this, please. Board back into open session after that short recess. We do not have anyone signed up for public comment, so we will move on to the next item on the agenda, which is the consent agenda. Um, you have all had the time to look over the minutes from the February 7th, 2023 regular meeting and the February 22nd, 2023 special called meeting. If there are no corrections, may I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I make a motion we approve the consent agenda. Motion by Ms. Poplin, a second. Second by Ms. Whitaker. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. Okay, the consent agenda has been approved. Next, we have committee reports, um, facilities, Ms. Carla Poplin. Um, the facilities committee met on the 9th and on the 22nd. Uh, we met to discuss the expansion at Indy and met with two architects and discussed plans for the expansion of the DLI program there. Um, the committee felt that Pinnacle was the best of the two that were presented 
Um, we also discussed some further district facility needs, and um, I am I will need a, a motion to ex or a second to accept Pinnacle as the architect for the ND project because it's coming out of committee. Okay, and you've all had a chance to look over your facilities report. So coming out of committee is the motion to approve Pinnacle Architecture for the additional classroom expansion at Indy Elementary. May I have a second? Second by Mr. Lisk. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed no. This motion has passed. Thank you, Ms. Poplin. Next is finance, Mr. Lisk. Uh, no report, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, instructional program, Mr. Sorensen. Nothing to report, Madam Chair. Thank you. Marketing and community engagement, Ms. Watson. I have nothing to report, but uh, I think we have Miss Melissa Smith everywhere right now. So uh, I got with her the other day and she said, oh, we'll do it sometime. So we'll have one. Right. And I think you do have some things going on with some mentoring as well. So thank you, Miss Watson. Yes, Policy, Miss Whitaker. No report. Thank you. Safety and security, Dr. Leffler. We met on February the 10th, and we went over quite a few things. Uh, Jennifer Flo and Beverly Pennington, they really got their hand on the uh, safety and security. And we still are uh, searching for some funding and for some SROs. Uh, we have about six, uh, six schools that don't have full-time SROs. And we had a long discussion about it and what we're gonna do until we can get our funding straightened out, we're gonna use off-duty uh, policemen and sheriff's deputies to cover our schools uh, just when they have the time to do it. We hope to get uh, full-time SROs as soon as we can. Uh, also, uh, Ms. Flo went over a a lot of things that she's doing, she informed the uh, the com committee that we have radios that 911 can get hold of our schools directly with weather updates and make them aware of anything going on in the community, and that's going to be a big safety deal. Uh, and we're waiting to get our equipment for the the card key readers. Instead of having to use keys, we can get into the doors with the card keys, but with the supply chain issues, we hadn't been able to do that yet. And they've also, she's also applied for a grant for $167,000 for security cameras and walkie-talkies based on the schools that are more uh, vulnerable. Um, they're gonna have a Batmobile, which is a, a uh, education process that comes into the high schools prior to prom, uh, warning about alcohol issues uh, with the prom. Something that they've initiated recently is uh, district random checks where they just pick a school out of a hat and they have the students go through the medical, the metal detectors and check their bags. And they've started that uh, last month. And they're also, uh, the biggest thing they are concerned about is, as far as safety and security is uh, social media. Social media stirs up a lot of things in our community. And after a uh, very uh, successful and fruitful meeting, uh, we adjourned. But uh, Ms. Flo and her group and the Sheriff's Department and the Police Department, all of them are doing an excellent job working together. Thank you for that report, Dr. Leffler. I see you back there at the back, Ms. Flo. Is there anything that you're wanting additional to say to the board or, you know, I, I know that I like the fact of what Dr. Leffler, I know you're seeking another grant. We are, I can get a little clarification too. And actually with that grant, I did 
just found out we did not receive that grant. Oh, I okay. Used today. So, um, we are looking for some additional funding for the cameras and for the radios and other areas, but there were so many requests for that grant money that um, they were not able to fulfill. And since we had received the other grant money, they gave it to other counties. But if you need clarification on the officers, I'll be more than glad to do that for the remainder of the school year. That's totally well, and Will you come up yeah. forward? Well, and I know I met the new officer at Central last week. So there is an, an yes. additional one in the city, correct? There, there is. So we included the city in that. The five schools that currently don't have the SROs and then Central Elementary as well, what we have done is working with the Sheriff Department and Albemarle Police Department. We are using off-duty officers to fill those slots. Um, some of them, we hope to, hope to have officers in the schools every day. They may be split to where they rotate through. Um, but it's just given more of that presence of the officers on, on campuses um, as much as possible. So that is our plan for the remainder of the school year, to have officers in as many of those elementary schools as we possibly can. Um, and then looking forward, we'll see what we can do to find the additional funding. Our SRO funding did roll over for next year, so we will have that funding. We just have to find the additional um, part of that in order to, to fund the full-time SROs. Any other Thank questions? You. Any other um, comments, board members? Ms. Flo, I do know that um, I have heard some great comments made already um, from one of our schools that parents have said, I've started seeing the, you know, the officer and it really makes us feel good to know that this is happening. So your efforts and with Dr. Leffler and his committee, it, it's, it's, it's meaningful. We appreciate I just, it. I just want to thank Ms. Flo um, for working with uh, the municipalities that she works with and also um, digging for those funds anywhere she can find them because I know that she's been working very hard on that, so thank you. We have curriculum and instruction next. Um, Dr. Amy Blake-Lewis. Good evening. Uh, Mr. Sorensen asked me to share with you all a summary of the instructional committee meeting. Um, if you will go in your packets to the yellow tab, uh, committee documentation, you'll find uh, some PowerPoint slides there. And I'll give you a moment to get there and then I will uh, briefly go through some of this information with you. So I do want to start off with just a reminder that this is unofficial data at this point, so it is not to be shared out. Uh, that is why I do not have slides prepared for public viewing this evening. This is just for board information, so I will share some generalities with you. Um, on the second page of those slides, the um, chart you see at the top, those um, are outlining our gains uh, for the fall 2022 testing. You'll notice that some of those are colored green and just a couple of those are colored red. The green indicates gains that we made in the fall semester with our high school EOC testing. So we had gains in the areas of biology, math one, and math three. We did take a slight drop in English two, but it was a very small drop. It was a, a negative 0 0.1, so a very small drop there. The next couple of slides you see represent the district progress overall with the fall testing. So you'll notice the uh, orange arrow indicates the last full year um, prior to COVID. Um, and you'll see that our results were, we were trending fairly high there. And so we dropped off steeply that next year. That was that COVID impact, but we are slowly starting to make our way back up. And so the next couple of pages will indicate that progress. If you will uh, then turn to, I think, the third page, you'll see a breakdown by the schools. At the bottom of page four, you'll see um, charts representing Albemarle High School. On the next page, North Stanley High School, South Stanley High School, and then turn the page at the top, you'll see West Stanley High School, followed by our two early colleges. What I'd like to point out is that overall, we are starting to see an upward trend in all of our high school EOC 
indices. There are a few areas that we're going to be working on, Math 1 being one of those areas. We're seeing some struggle there. But for the most part, I would say Math 3, we're seeing some strong results trending upward there. We had some really good results with biology this fall, particularly at Albemarle High School. Um, of our four traditional high schools, they pulled in the highest results for biology this fall. Um, so we're really starting to see some great progress there with Albemarle High School. Um, on the bottom of page seven, it's just a breakdown of the number that we've tested thus far. Um, and so you'll see that there is 56.8% of our students in the high school that remain to be tested um, for the spring data. And then once we have that spring data, of course, those two sets of data will be meshed and then we'll know our overall performance for this school year. I'll pause there for any questions that you may have. Okay, and the next document is just showing our iReady progress. Um, this is our middle of the year data with iReady. Um, the first document you see is our 4-8 reading data. And if you'll draw your attention to the middle column that says growth, median percent of typical growth achieved, what we want to see here at the middle of the year is 50% because that would indicate that that student has mastered about half of the material for that grade level. So anytime you see 50% or greater, those students are definitely on track to have fully mastered that content for the year. I would draw your attention to the areas where we've already exceeded 100%, meaning that those students have clearly mastered and are well above um, exceeding growth measures um, for that final administration of the EOG. So I'd like to give a quick shout out to Baden Elementary, their fourth and fifth grade, uh, to North Stanley Middle School, their seventh and eighth grade, Oakboro Elementary for their fifth and for their middle school seventh grade. And then on the back of that page, West Stanley Middle School with their sixth grade and their eighth grade. Um, and that is, of course, in reading. Um, same type of information on the next document for iReady Math. Uh, so again, drawing your attention to the growth, we wanna see anything over 50%. And so a quick shout out to those that are over 100%, Albemarle Middle School for their sixth grade. Um, and Oakboro for their fifth and seventh grade and eighth grade, and then West Stanley Middle School for their eighth grade. So again, if we're looking at um, this iReady data, we've been participating in a study with them, and we know that these iReady results per this study have shown that there's a strong correlation that would indicate the uh, correlation between the performance with this iReady and the performance indicators for the EOG at the end of the year. There's a very strong correlation there, meaning that this is a strong indicator of what we can expect for student performance when we get to the EOGs in June. Um, the teachers are using these diagnostic results to know where to target and who to target for those interventions so that we are on track uh, for meeting expected growth. Um, I am happy to share additional information or even have a special session with you if you'd like to dig a little bit deeper into it. So um, please let me know what questions you may have and uh, I would be happy to arrange that for you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I also would like for you just to relay to all of our teachers and staff and our students that it's, it's great that we're seeing the trend now um, moving upward and we know that our teachers are working hard and we hope that our our students are working just as hard as they see their teachers are working so thank you for that sharing that thank you next is auxiliary services mr dudney uh, i will say just a few words um it's that time of year again to where I'll start be working on next year's uh, budget. So um, um, based on our conversation we had today um, in our previous meeting at four, um, I'll be trying to get everything in line to present a budget uh, to um, our finance committee as well. So it will be ready to go to our county commissioners on the, the required due date is May 15th. I would like to have it prior to that. So uh, I just wanna let y'all know what I'll be starting to work on. Um, any input I'll be needing from um, um, 
y'all as well as the superintendent, as well as the finance committee, as well as uh, I'll touch base with Todd concerning capital outlay needs and maintenance needs and stuff like that so we can um, start building that budget to have it, I hope, by the end of this month. Thank you. And um, I know that our finance, okay, even our facilities will be working closely with that and you know, um, getting these things prepared that we know will be presented to our commissioners. Thank you. Next on the agenda is superintendent comments. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, it's good to recognize everyone a little while ago, some great talent and some uh, dedicated educators. <clears throat> uh, this week, March 6th through 10th, is uh, there's a couple things going on. Uh, first is National School Social Worker Week, and this is to celebrate our school social workers across the nation and appreciate their work in helping students achieve uh, academic success. Uh, the theme this year is Social Work Breaks Barriers. Uh, this week is also National School Breakfast Week, which celebrates the importance of a nutritious school breakfast for fueling students and their success. So if you ever get a chance to get out, thank our, um, thank our staff who help prepare these breakfasts. And also it is North Carolina Severe Weather Week, and we did yesterday have our tornado drill, yearly tornado drill. We had to move it from the state's normal time uh, because of some other logistical things. So as far as days, uh, March 2nd was Read Across America Day. I believe some of you uh, last week got to go and read to some of our uh, young elementary students. I know that's always a fun time. Uh, March 4th was Maintenance Workers Appreciation Day. Uh, and also uh, March 12th, very important, make sure to uh, put the clocks forward an hour. It is spring forward, March the 12th. Uh, we will start school at the same time, except it'll be one hour closer. So make sure you get the kids in bed a little early. Uh, as far as months go, this is our Music in Our School Month. The purpose of the month is to raise awareness of the importance of music education for all our children and to remind citizens that school is where all children should have access to music. Um, I'm not going to get political, but there are several bills in our General Assembly moving through that would directly affect several aspects of public schools. I just invite everyone to make sure they're educated on these bills and the effect that will have on our schools. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dennis. And I hope that our children are taking advantage of the school breakfast week, um, maybe even more eating breakfast than even usual. I hope that's happening. <clears throat> Next is board member comments. Uh, Ms. Whitaker, I am going to start with you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I know we recognized um, several uh, employees tonight, but I, I wanted to just spend just a minute and talk about Louise Green. Um, I do that because I, I've, I've walked a mile in her shoes, so I understand um, you know, what she does on a daily basis. The old saying that we really know who runs the school, it's the secretary. And uh, there are a lot of times when that, that truly is a true statement. So. Um, you know, most people who have the years of service in that Miss Green has in are at home enjoying retirement. Um, but she loves to work and she loves her school and I think you, you can see that in her probably every day. For those of you who have not had an opportunity to taste one of her pound cakes, uh, you haven't lived until you've had the chance to do that. So if you're ever anywhere and Miss Green has, has cooked the pound cake and brought it in, I encourage you to, uh, to fight for a piece of that. So thank you so much. Thank you, Miss Whitaker. That shows us also that we appreciate what you do in the schools as well. Um, next, uh, Mr. Lisk. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Mrs. Green's always the first to, to, to meet me when I go up there. and My wife is up there frequently. And I think she sort of runs the school sometimes but in place of Devron. Um, I'll try to keep my comments brief. I know I went long last time. Uh, we didn't have a finance committee meeting this month, uh, but we do have a, a joint uh, county commissioner meeting with a committee from this board um, tomorrow at 4 p.m. Uh, as Mr. Dudney said, <clears throat> it's budget season, so to speak. Um, fiscal year ends June 30th uh, next year starts on July the 1st. 
Uh, so what that means is um, we've got to go to our county commissioners and explain to them uh, our funding needs, uh, you know, not only in the short term, but also in the long term. Uh, so we'll meet with Commissioner Lawhon, Ashuto, and Barbie. It's really a continuation of some of the meetings last year. Uh, and this board's made a concerted effort, and I believe the county commissioners have made a concerted effort uh, that we can have open communication, uh, improve communication, uh, and find a way to work together. Some of the topics we'll be discussing uh, are employee recruitment and retainment. Um, that's obviously a major issue, uh, both in the corporate world uh, and certainly in Stanley County Schools. Uh, being surrounded by Union, Cabarrus, and, and Rowan makes it, certainly makes it difficult. Um, but that that you know part of that is is the pay structure, supplements to teachers, um, classified pay scale. Um, we've made strides uh, in this committee and the board uh, of improving that. Uh, and I hope that we can continue to do so this uh, next fiscal year. Um, speaking of safety with Mrs. Flo, SROs in every school, um, we, we've got the grant money um, that will help offset some of that cost. So we will be <clears throat> discussing this again um, with, with the county commissioners uh, and trying to find uh, uh, how we can you know, get, the, get the money to, to, to pay an officer to, to be in every school. Uh, I do think that that's important. And of course, uh, we've got facility needs. Uh, and I think uh, Mrs. Uh, Poplin mentioned uh, the uh, Indy project coming up. We've, we've got some other short-term projects um, that need to be done uh, and uh, certainly looking longer term. So as the uh, county has grown uh, in, in places and revenue is, has increased, um, we've got to ensure that we can maintain our facilities and um, you know, meet the growth where it's at. Uh, I'll finish on this. Uh, I want to thank uh, Lindsay Merritt, Devron Furr, Jamie Underwood, and Mandy Eford uh, for allowing me to, to, to read uh, to the students. Um, I really hate to have to follow Mrs. Glenda Gibson uh, in the Lorax. Uh, I'm coming up in my suit and look pretty boring, tall, bald guy. I only had one fifth grader that started to yawn uh, and doze off. <laughs> book got a little long but um, the it's much easier to read to to kindergartners so uh, I do do feel for the teachers with the kids as they get older right? it's probably more challenging but thank you thank you mr. Lisk I'm thinking about retiring that and I already have it packed for you for next year so it already has your name on it I will take some extra hair what? I don't know if you're going to need any egg. I mean, that's... Orange or green, or it doesn't matter. Oh, it's, it's a big full head of orange. I just want to see the look on people's faces when you're riding on the road with the suit on. <laughs> yes. 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 Uh-huh. All right. Thank you. Ms. Poplin. Um, I'm going to start off with uh, also the Read Across America Day. I had the opportunity to um, read to two different grades at East and um, two different grades at Norwood. We have... As Mr. Sorensen says, we got paid today. We had some really great thank you notes up here from the first graders at East, and I just really appreciate that. That made, that made my day tonight. Um, also, I uh, had the opportunity to um, purchase some keychains from the early childhood development class at North Selling High School this week. Um, and uh, they just did such a great job on those, and I thought that was wonderful. Um, also uh, was at the cafeteria at East today, and they have it decorated for um, breakfast week. Very um, construction thing. They had all kinds of things hanging in there, and the table's all decorated. So I just really appreciate all the work those ladies put in um, at East for that. And also want to um, congratulate all of our winners and staff winners tonight and Spelling Bee and all those folks on um, – all of their accomplishments and just really appreciate all the hard work uh, the teachers and um, staff are putting in. So thank you. Thank you. Um, Dr. Leffler. I would like to also congratulate the people that had the awards, both the staff and the students and the secretaries and everybody. They're doing a great job. It seems like the this meeting, we've had a lot of very positive things, and we just need to keep it going. With the instruction committee, uh, with COVID, all of our marks and grades went down, but it seems like they're gradually coming up. So students and parents and teachers, 
keep up the good work as it seems like it's working. Thank you, Dr. Levler. Uh, Ms. Watson. I also would like to congratulate all the winners tonight. Um, it's amazing what we have in Stanley County with our students and our teachers and how well they are doing. And I want to really tell you, um, you saw on the screen the other, uh, just a little bit ago about Be Pro, Be Proud. I went to that mobile over at Aramal High School and those kids were so excited. I mean, they were so excited about doing this. And when this one little guy was driving a tr uh, transfer truck and he hit a sign, he said, oh, that's not real, we'll keep going. <laughs> But anyway, the gentleman that is over that, he presented to them. Uh, he had a, a TV there, and it said all the schools that they could go to. And also, he had a list where they could go ahead and put their name there. And he said, if you put your name in here, he said, they will be calling you. So it's really good what we have going on in Stanley County. And also, um, not last Friday, but the Friday before, we did a mentor meeting at Aramal High School, uh, which I think is really, really great. It helps these seniors that are a little bit behind, and um, the, the people that were there that wanted to do help them, and the students also uh, were very, very, I, I mean, they just clicked. They really clicked. And um, I am really, really proud of that because I wanted that for a long time. Um, and I think we need it in all of our high schools and our, our middle schools and maybe sometimes we'll get into our, our elementary schools, that would help. Uh, I think, you know, as long as the, some of these students are a little bit behind, if they know somebody is really helping them and care about them, that changes their attitude. And I think that's, we just have so many good things going on in Stanley County Schools and I'm really, really proud of all of it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Watson. Mr. Sorensen. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm not really supposed to be here tonight, and some nights y'all probably think that when I'm supposed to be here, <laughs> but I'm really glad I got to come and shake hands with a world-class athlete. I understand how significant what that young lady's doing and has done, so. And I want to hit on a couple of experiences from Stanley County Schools that most of the folks don't get a, get a chance to see this. I met a dinosaur expert on the Indy bus when I rode the Indy bus a few weeks back. And uh, I'm going to call him Amos, not his name, but call Amos. Amos, the dinosaur expert, told me everything I ever needed to know about several different dinosaurs. And the one that I couldn't remember, he told me that was a stegosaurus. So this kid really knew his stuff. Okay. But uh, that was pretty important to me. Uh, the. Uh, the other thing I want to do is I want to share just, we got these, we, I call this getting paid. This is from the little kids. It's real important for you folks to know some of this stuff. But uh, let's see if I can find the right one. Here he is. Mr. Sorensen, thank you for coming. I like your clothes. That's a secret between me and the kids. You got to see that. That was fun. So much love you. I love you so much for that because you are the best reader. Good job. And then it says in the back, you are cool. That's the stuff. I was talking to you, and I, you keep your 300 bucks a month or so. That's the stuff that pays me. Uh, bottom line is we got some amazing kids. We got amazing faculties and staffs. We're on the right track. We just gotta, we just gotta keep rudging forward. And then thank you, Dr. Amy Blake. I, I kicked and fussed some of the uh, instructional stuff that she's doing. It's, it's working. So we need to stay on track, and that's all I gotta say. Thank you, Mr. Sorensen. Um, I just, I really wanted all the board members to know all the comments that I heard when I was going into schools, the, the compliments that the teachers were making to our board, and I want all of you to know that um, they appreciate any time that we come in, um, when they send us invitations to things, and sometimes we can make it and sometimes we can't. Uh, I agree with you, the, the reading part to me and the dressing up part is what I live for, um, at least for that, for that week. And um, some of us rode a school bus just recently too. That was fun and I had great conversations with someone on a school bus um, telling me all about bulls and how to buck up to them. Um, and then they would just run away from me. 
But I lived with some on a farm with cows and bulls, and they didn't ever run away from me. So um, that indie reading bowl, that's, that's great. That is. Um, and I spoke with uh, Miss Carrie Honeycutt, board members, um, because I would have loved to have had those fourth graders here tonight. So I have asked her if she would get in touch with me, uh, maybe shoot me a date, a time, that we could go there and just, she said it could be in their media center, and we can hear from those students and just what all they did to, um, to become these state champions with this. And so I'm looking forward maybe that some of us on the board, others that, that we can go there to Indy to do that. Miss Mandy Melton and everything that she does, all of our CTE programs, um, it's, it's wonderful when you hear kids say we have the best teachers, best CTE teachers, and that means a lot. Um, to the schools and the principals where I was able to be in with reading, um, I, I thank them. And then I look out here always and I see those of you from our county office that are here regularly um, as we have our board mem meetings, um, our security at the back. We always appreciate you. I don't want you to think that if nothing's ever mentioned, but we, we appreciate all that you do and that you are here in attendance at our meetings. The date and time for our next regular scheduled board meeting is Tuesday, April the 4th, 2023 in the G. McIntyre room, beginning at 6.15. Skipping the part about closed session, we are going to personnel administration and student services, Ms. Wood. Madam Chair and members of the board, I'd like to draw your attention to the updated personnel agenda that was at your seats, additions that were added, um, they were added in red. Section one requires no action. Section two does require action. So I'd like to entertain your vote at this time. Okay, board members, may I have a motion to approve section two of the personnel agenda? I make a motion we approve section two of the personnel agenda. Motion by Ms. Poplin, a second. Second by Ms. Watson. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed, no. Section two has been approved. Thank you. Thank you. And one final thing I, I want to say to Ms. Whitaker, um, that was a beautiful prayer at the beginning that touched my heart. And I hope everyone else's. Thank you. I need a motion to adjourn. Unless y'all just want to stay here. <laughs> Make a motion we adjourn. A motion by Ms. Poplin, a second. By Ms. Watson, all in favor say aye. Opposed no. We are adjourned. Thank you.